Good morning guys. So today in this tutorial, what we're going to be doing is creating another enemy for our little platforming game. So at the moment we've got this guy, which will just chase you and when he hits you, he knocks you back. And if he knocks you over the edge of the map, um, like this guy's bad too, come on. you're dead. So we're going to be creating another guy that does a similar sort of thing to that, that also knocks you off the map. Um, but to do that, I had a tutorial recently, which I'll put a link to in the description, where I showed you how to make um, one of these turrets. So what these guys look like is if you walk in range, he does that and he shoots at you. And he, he did used to explode when he got you, but they're just disappearing at the moment. The projectiles, that is. So what we're going to do, um, if you haven't watched that tutorial, go and watch that and, and quickly knock up one of these guys for yourself. Um, and... Then in the rest of this tutorial, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to set up his projectiles to send you flying off the map. It's going to be a super short one today, guys, and then we'll make some we'll make a new enemy in the next one. So, if you followed that other tutorial, you'll have a folder called Proximity Turret. Proximity Turret. Crack that open, um, and in here, open up Simple Projectile, which is the one that he launches. Um, this is what it looks like at the moment. Um, if you follow the tutorial, there'll be some other stuff in here like spawn explosion and sound and whatever. Um, you can just delete all of that. Basically, all we want is this guy to just be a static mesh like that. The mesh simulates physics and has gravity off and simulation generates hit events. That's all I've changed, so make sure you set all of those. Um, and then on component hit of static mesh, we just destroy the actor. That's all. Um... That's all for now on that. What we need to do now is we need to create an explosion blueprint. Um, and this is where we're going to set up the functionality to launch the character when um, it gets hit. So down in your content browser, go new blueprint class of type actor and call this um, force explosion. That is a shit name, but that's fine. Okay. Um, in here, add component. We'll add a particle system. And we'll also add um, an audio component. Um, the particle system is going to be an explosion and the audio component is going to be sound explosion, just like that. Um, now what we need is we need a collision. So we'll type in collision up here, sphere collision. And we want to scale that so that looks like a reasonable size to encompass the explosion, something like that. So if you're within that volume when the explosion detonates, you're going to get hit and you're going to take damage or get sent flying. Okay, so now that we've got that, what we're going to do off of begin play is we're going to get our sphere, we're going to drag that in, and we're going to say get overlapping actors, like that, and then off of the overlapping actors we're going to do a for loop, and we're going to do something for each of the actors that are overlapped by the explosion. And what we're going to do is we're going to cast to character. So we're basically going to check if this actor is... Um, a character or a descendant, a child of a character. And our third person character is the child of the character. So this will apply to the third person character. And what we're going to do is as character, we're going to say launch character. And we're going to send them flying. Now, the velocity that we want to send them flying at, um, what we'll do is we'll get the center of the particle system, perhaps. I suppose it doesn't really matter. We could get the scene route. So we'll get the scene route. And we'll say get world location. So what we're going to do for the velocity is we're going to draw a line from the center of the explosion to the center of the character. And that's going to be the direction that we send them flying from. So we've got the world location of the scene route. So now we just need the world location of the um, character. So if I double click this, you can add some reroute nodes to this. And we can just tap the up arrow to move them up like that. Move just that above so it's out of the way. And then down here, like this, we're going to say get world, uh, sorry, not world, get actor location, because this is an actor. Um, and I'm just going to stack these like that, so that it's a bit neater. And then what we're going to do is we're going to drag off of get world location and type in get unit direction vector. And we're getting a vector from the world location of the explosion to the world location of the actor. And then what we need to do is now we've got the direction, we just multiply that by a scalar, to give it some sort of um, speed. So that is going to be called explosion speed, I guess. Explosion speed, yeah. That's a pretty poor name, but that's fine. 
um, and we're going to default that to maybe, I don't know, 500. And then we're going to hook that up into launch velocity just like that. And that should be working fine. So let's just, I'm going to dock that up there. And then I'm going to go in here. Um, we need to go to simple projectile now. And off of component hit, we're going to say um, spawn actor from class. And what we're going to do is we're going to spawn that explosion that we just created. So we called it force explosion, I think. Force explosion BP. And the transform of that is just going to be the transform of the scene root, just like that. Actually, no, it won't be. It'll be the explosion of the mesh, because this mesh is simulating physics and flying around the place. We want it to explode from wherever that mesh is um, when it hits. So drag in the mesh and say get transform, get world transform. And then we want to split that and split the transform on the spawn actor as well. Hook up the... Um, location you might as well hook up the rotation as well even though it doesn't really matter um, and leave one here like that actually you know what we could do is if we go times float down like this and we type in one 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 like that and then off of this we can actually make this a variable and call this explosion scale just like that um, and you know what we could also do if you wanted to take this another step further actually let me just e let tidy this up first so explosion scale that'll default to one but then say we had like a different enemy that's spawned the same projectile but we wanted them to have a bigger explosion we could toggle this explosion scale variable to make the explosion bigger um, that's all good that's all we need there for now so let's give this guy a test so if I put him in here um, he's spawning that simple projectile. That simple projectile is going to explode when it hits something and spawn an explosion with with force. And that explosion with force should send any characters flying that come in contact with it. So, let's test. Nothing happens. Okay. Um, let's debug. So, a simple projectile. Um, it's definitely spawning the explosion because it made the sound and it made the explosion. So let's go to the um, if force explosion BP. Maybe what's happening here? Does this have a default? Ex yeah, five hundred. Maybe the cast is failing. Um, so let's put a print string off here. Um, and this can be um launched just like that and then let's copy this and put this down here and we'll say cast failed just like that all right let's give that another try okay nothing even happened um let's see let's type in print string here to just see if the um, projectile is spawning this right explosion. Maybe it's not. Okay, no, that's working. So it's definitely spawning the explosion. And it's, is it the right explosion? Force explosion BP? Yes. Um, so then there must be a problem with this here. So this isn't even, what if I type in print string like this? Maybe what we need is we need to add a class filter here, just like that. Maybe we type in actor there. Yeah, let's give that a go. I think that could have been the problem. Because this wasn't even firing. So if this wasn't firing, then this must have had um, no valid entries in there. So this just must have automatically gone to completed. So we could just add a print string down here and just say complete to debug that. Sorry about the stuff around, guys. But debugging is an important skill, and I think watching people debug stuff helps you become a better debugger. Okay, so that's saying complete instantly. It's saying complete instantly without even um, triggering this. So, get overlapping actors of the sphere. Maybe we can make that a bit bigger or something. Maybe we can make it just like that. No, that's enormous. Let's say if we made it like 100. 
but I still think the problem is with this. Get overlapping actors, class filter, um, actor. What if we try it? Mm, could we try character? We could try character. And let's put that print string back on here. Completed. Just so we know what's going on at all times. Okay, the class filter's not working. So, there is something that we could do. Um, let me just try and figure this out, though. Hmm. Get overlapping actors from Sphere. Okay, look, there is something else we can do. Let's just do this a different way. Um, sorry about that, guys. So what we could do is off of um, begin play, we could say delay, and we could wait 0.1 of a second, and then after that 0.1 of a second, we can destroy this collision. And then what we'll do, so that's that's like the initial flash of the explosion. This um, sphere is like the initial flash. So that gets destroyed after that, and then what we could do is off of sphere, we could have a begin overlap event. So anything that overlaps it while it still exists will actually get launched. So let's get rid of the for each loop, get rid of completed, and then off of begin overlap, cast a character and hook that up to the other actor like that. Oops. Okay. Um, so now begin overlap, if it's a character, launch the character. Um, and we'll still have our debug messages there like that. So let's give that a try. Okay, we got launched. Beautiful. It's only a little bit, and you can see that there were two cast fails. That's because the explosion's also overlapping, like, the ground and stuff. Okay, so that's definitely launching us. We could make that explosion a bit more, um, vicious though. So let's change the explosion speed to 1000, like that. It's because it's launching us into the ground, I think. Yeah, see, that's a lot crazier when you actually get hit like that. Okay. So that, I might leave that there, guys. Um, bit of a messy tutorial, but you get the idea. If you wanted to launch the character up a little bit more, um, you could do what we did in the last tutorial. So the way that we did that is we broke this here. And then when we got the unit direction vector from the explosion to the character, we split this here and then we went make vector and we made a vector and stripped out the Z. Um, and now what we do is we say add vector and sorry, not that, we want to go normalize vector, like that there. So now this has a length of one, the vector coming into this has a length of one, and it only consists of the X and the Y. So then if you set a value for the Z, say um, one like that, the hypotenuse of X and Y is one, the Z is one, the tangent of one and one is 45 degrees, so you'll get launched at a 45 degree angle. So if you then hook that up into this like that, um, you've got a unit vector pointing away from the explosion on the X and Y and pointing upwards at a 45 degree angle um, relative to the ground and then that's multiplied by the speed so let's give that a go this will get us launching a lot further and upwards more yeah like that and that's, that's, ex that's enormous now so we could probably change this back to like 500 or something now Okay. That looks fair. If you get hit by that, that's that's pretty good. That could potentially be dangerous. Okay, guys. Um, I might leave that there. If you have any questions about this, let me know. Um, and also, if you happen to know what happened with that um, weird node, where were, where was it in the force explosion one, where we were trying to use the um get all overlapping actors, why that wasn't working, 
It was returning no actors for some reason, which I'm not quite sure um, why it was doing that. So if you have a if you have an idea about that, um, leave that in the comments as well, because I'd like to know. But if any of the other stuff didn't make sense, leave me a comment and I'll try to help you out. But otherwise, let's leave that there for this one, guys. Um, I'll see you next time.